this project uh, was a study of bamboo architecture and bamboo products of the northeastern region in India and it was eventually published in 86 as a book called the bamboo and cane crafts of northeast India. Uh, this chapter on bamboo architecture which I will share with you uh, deals with suspension bridges and the traditional houses which are there. So what you see here is the Apatani uh, village in Arunachal Pradesh. Suspension bridges were made of uh, cane and also of bamboo and it is important to understand that these are uh, built by local uh, communities using their traditional wisdom and uh, amazing structures have been built uh, over the years and uh, we saw these uh, long span suspension bridges made from cane and only in recent years have some of the cables been replaced with steel cables. So here it uses entirely cane or rattan cables and bamboo is used for the floor of the uh, walkway. This uh, bridge was built by uh, the Monpa tribe in Arunachal in western Kamen district. It's an all cane uh, suspension bridge. Uh, it has two wooden structures at both ends of the river and the structures are held up. They no, don't have foundations underground, but they are held up by foundations which are really stones and boulders from the river which have been piled on to keep the you know, ropes in tension and the wooden frames upright. This is a bamboo suspension bridge also built by the Montas in the upper reaches of uh, the western Himalayan range and uh, <coughs> in Arunachal Pradesh and the uh, uh, cables are made from bamboo. This bamboo is of very small diameter and it is hand twisted to form these cables and these cables are overlappingly joined and in the background you can see the posts which have been set up to support these cables. So the community actually comes down from the hill. Uh, it's a collective activity <coughs> and they build this uh, structure using community labor and they finish the structure before the monsoons uh, actually come in. The wall and floor of the this particular bridge is made from the same bamboo and one can see uh, the weaving, uh, part of the weaving, it's like a selvage of, of fabric where the uh, weft fibers go across and return back over the surface to interweave the warp elements. This is the Ryang house of uh, Tripura. The Ryangs live in Tripura and this is made entirely of uh, locally available bamboo, which is muli bamboo and the roof in this particular case is also made from bamboo leaves. Uh, the purlins, the rafters, the poles, all of it is bamboo and the floor of the the race platform is made of bamboo mat which is resting on a bamboo grid. The tribal houses of Piangs in another village nearby and a cluster of houses in Mizoram is what uh, we had studied while we traveled. The Mizos of course and other, tri other tribes as well use different weave structures to show, uh, showcase the surface quality of this bamboo weave and you can see that the weaves can be the quill or tabby and at the lower portion you see the meso window which is a sprung strip construction and very beautifully made uh, when, when one sees the detail and understand it is entirely without any binding it is entirely held together by the tension of the strips and it's like a hanging window and it slides on a horizontal bamboo beam uh, slides across the opening so it, uh, it actually hangs and it slides across the opening and it's an amazing form for an entirely, uh, uh, entirely bamboo made structure. This <coughs> is the Adi Galong house in Arunachal. The Galongs live in the Siang district of Arunachal and the detail in the image below uh, is really uh, a wooden pole and a large wooden plate which sits at the top of the post to prevent rats from climbing into granaries and uh, the homes. I think it's an interesting detail, so it's actually a smooth surface which works completely horizontal uh, and which rats cannot navigate across easily.
Pahadigalong village, uh, located in a valley and on the hill, and some drawings of the large uh, single room with a fireplace in the middle. And the drawing at the bottom shows the external view of the pigsty latrine, which is used uh, uh, you know, to uh, basically uh, keep the hygiene in use. So this is located at the back of the house, looking downhill. A section through the house with the pigsty latrine is on the right hand side. So one can see uh, any affluence flowing out from that would flow downhill. The detail of the pigsty latrine, very interesting way in which bamboo is shaved off so that it forms a finger-like uh, joint and which can support a tie beam inside the fingers. Bamboo houses of Assam and Tripura are plains dwellings and it's interesting that a lot of mat is used in this. Uh, flattened bamboo mats are used for fences, for walls and in the, in the case of the Assam type house, which is called the Assam type house, uh, it's wooden frames with bamboo in fill panels which are plastered over. The bamboo is wattle and uh, about construction, so the bamboo is woven uh, as strips held within the wooden frame and plastered from both sides. It could either be mud plaster in village houses or lime and cement plaster in uh, formal buildings that are put up by the government and these people. This is a typical Assam type house for a village building. It has got the thatch roof on a bamboo frame. The walls are made from uh, mat woven in uh, bamboo and these are the mats fabricated by professionals and supplied to house uh, builders and house owners and uh, these can be running maintenance can also be provided so different types of mats are made and these are taken forward. Doors are made in interesting manner and hinged together and that's something that would be useful. Sliding door in this case is seen and a pivoted door at the bottom. Uh, the professional uh, construction one saw at Badarpur Ghat near the river in Barak Valley where uh, bamboo is floated downstream, flattened by professional uh, craftsmen. Uh, stacks of these are made and then re-exported by truck to all over the northeast and also forwarded to Calcutta and uh, the Gulf. Although there is fabrication in each location, normally it doesn't travel too much, too great a distance. It is locally consumed. The bamboos are, uh, are sent by waterways so that they can be taken uh, to quite a distance. In some cases, the flattened boards are divided into two. The outer layer is made into a higher quality board and the inner layer of the flattened portion is made into lower quality woven mats and sold at different prices for interior partitions. The uh, outer skin of bamboo is very impermeable so it is usually used on the outside surface of the building. Again, multiple weave structures and in Tripura particularly, the bamboo fences come in huge variety of forms and uh, uh, structures and this is something very fascinating. Open field fences, one could see miles and miles of field fences across Assam and Tripura and uh, one wonder, you know, the kind of opportunity cost if you have to replace these with either uh, you know, metal wire or with steel or, um, and with uh, cement and brick. Uh, the amount of uh, time, labor, material cost that would go into uh, replacing some of these things. So it actually gives us an idea that bamboo, if used in these kind of local, locally consumable um, ways, can actually be a very wonderful material and one can actually invest uh, time and effort to evolving new architectural forms using this material. Uh, many structural forms, uh, the Monpa fence is uh, shown over here, uh, has woven uh, fabric-like weaves or knits and it can continue over a long surface. These are made in panels, the bamboo gates and fences and uh, then held up in field uh, styles, uh, bamboo fences, variety of forms are made. Then uh, there are informal bridges which are small pole bridges which go across uh, uh, for navigating across small ponds and 